Hi, my name is Nina Kirkes and I'm a director of consulting at LexisNexis Risk Solutions. So I think that people and technology are not really mutually exclusive. I think that both work very, very well together. Um, and so, yes, we have seen more investments in, in people over the years simply because we were trying to kind of throw people at the problem. And the problems that we have were, um, you know, significant volumes of false positives, um, poor quality of data, siloed um, data as well. And so people were really solving issues that technology could solve a lot better today. Now, we have over the years seen an increase in investment um, to technology, but as I said, they're not mutually exclusive and they can only work very well together. Um, so I don't really foresee the te technology replacing people in the future. Yes, there are certain elements of technology that can help automate some of the menial tasks, some of the processes that people are doing, but overall, both um, are absolutely working uh, you know, together at, rightly as they should. So over the last couple of years, specifically with the pandemic, we have seen an increase in fraud and specifically in the digital fraud. And I think that's also very logical with everything that has been going on. So a lot of the businesses have been moving online and moving their operations online. So a lot of the payment processing uh, was happening online. Uh, so certainly the, the way that fraud occurs today has changed. Some of the more kind of traditional uh, fraud, fraudulent behaviors or traditional economic crime behaviors are now online. And I, I don't think that the technology is a blind spot, but I do think that we need to, in the industry, act a lot faster uh, to respond to the changing uh, behaviors of consumers and the changing behaviors of the criminals that absolutely goes with that. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. Who's going to get that fir there first? Is it the criminals? Or is it the you know the technology vendors? And I truly hope that it's that it's us that the vendors can prevent uh, some of the wrongdoings that the criminals have in mind. So interestingly enough, some of the larger organizations absolutely have issues with legacy technology, and that is really looking at um, you know the way that they were built. So uh, we have large financial institutions which are incumbents in the market, and they a lot of them have built in-house solutions to help fight money laundering. Now, with these solutions, they often had holes in you know, the build, given that the regulation was really changing fast. Um, these financial institutions took the time to patch those um, holes and you know, almost like put a plaster on top of it to fix whatever the new regulation was driving. Now, this does become an issue. Uh, and also, one of the other challenges that I already mentioned before is this kind of siloed data. So we had data sitting in a lot of different systems, data that wasn't communicating to each other. And now with the new market entrance, and specifically if we talk about new financial institutions, so neo banks, challenger banks, um, they're a lot more tech focused, right? So they are operating um, online in everything that they do. And they have that flexibility to kind of start from scratch, to partner from scratch with some of the vendors in the market and actually change a little bit how we approach um, the prevention of money laundering and fraud. I'm not saying that either side is good or bad. I don't think that everybody ha anybody has it perfect quite yet. Uh, but hopefully with the kind of the technology outlook, uh, you know, the, the new entrants to the market are also driving the change with some of the incumbents. So we are seeing a faster adaptation of technology uh, with some of the larger institutions in the market. So we've talked a little bit about criminals and the way that they actually do business. So today um, they're adapting to the new way of the market actually interacting. So we are significantly operating digi digitally a lot more um, and so are the criminals. So certainly if the lenders are not adapting to that and not thinking about the, you know about their business in the way that criminals could think about their business they could be left to holes they could be um, you know left to to deal with fines and significant reputational damages nobody wants a reputational damage because that then impacts the future of your business and and um, certainly that's something that, that they should they should look to avoid so compliance is not isolated. What's interesting with a lot of institutions is that they, for years, were looking at compliance functions as um, cost centers. Now, there is a little bit of a shift in the market, and we would want to see a lot more of that, is that we look at 
compliance from a strategic perspective. So we have a, a lens uh, where we think about what is it that we are trying to achieve um, as a business and how can compliance help us get there. So let's think about it from a strategic perspective. Where can compliance actually add value to our business and what additional uh, things can it bring to us? So as we are onboarding our customers, let's think about the, the questions that we ask, uh, what are those, you know, what additional information can those questions give us about our customer so that we can actually use that as a competitive advantage going forward to offer better services and better products. Not only that, as I said, we are not operating in isolation uh, in compliance anymore. Uh, there is this kind of convergence of fraud and anti-money laundering. Uh, we hear a term Frammel in the market quite quite a bit recently, um, and and you know I think when we look at the customer we need to think about them holistically. So from the point of onboarding, from the point of engaging with the customer, up until we potentially offboard them one day. So what does that full life cycle look like for the customer? And that's truly where the orchestration platforms um, can help manage those relationships on an ongoing basing basis. And that's certainly where we at LexisNexis Risk Solutions can assist our customers. Automation is extremely important and over the last few years we have seen a shift towards automation. Um, what I think is interesting to think about is taking it in bite-sized efforts. If we look at automation as a whole and start kind of attacking it from all the different angles, it becomes really difficult. So let's think about little elements of the work that we do that we could improve by automation. As an example, you know, we talked about false positives and the volumes of false positives being really high. Now, can um, you know some some robotic process automation or artificial intelligence imp uh, help us lower the numbers of false positives or actually close some of the, those alerts that are potentially not really um, of, of a high risk for our business? So, thinking about some of the lower risks um, to the business. So, what can we do to um, to kind of close out? Um, those, those alerts and actually deal uh, with the challenges that that presents. So let's think about bite-sized efforts. And I think throughout the industry for years, we were talking about um, you know, tone from the top. So culture of compliance is extremely important. So again, let's not keep the compliance department in isolation. Uh, compliance today really represents the cost of doing business. So spreading the culture of compliance throughout the whole organization uh, is critical for the success of um, automation and improving some of the processes. Very good question. Um, I, I, I don't think I have a, a very easy answer for what the future of, of compliance looks like, but certainly we are moving towards, um, you know, kind of digital engagement, digitally led uh, world. Uh, behavioral biometrics and generally biometrics are really helping drive some of those decisions. Um, analytics, and as well as I said um, earlier, so how do we actually overlay the analytics on top of the data that we've gathered for compliance to use that uh, to provide the value for the business uh, and to create the business of the future. So let's not think about the compliance in isolation. Let's use the information, let's use the data that we've leveraged from compliance to actually build a business. And also let's prepare for more regulation because I'm sure that that's, uh, that's coming our way. Um, as we've seen over the last few years, uh, just there has been a faster uh, change and impact in some of the regulatory drivers and that trend is going to continue.